I love the Wheel of Time book series. Ever since I read it roughly six years ago, this epic 15 book high fantasy series by late author Robert Jordan and finished by Brandon Sanderson has occupied my imagination. Mostly because it has grand character arcs, a hero's journey with a subversive twist, fun action and characterization, deep world building, an intuitive magic system, ingenious fantasy concepts, and a political angle where all the nations featured in the series must unite to defeat the evil Dark One, but also might be too selfish to do so. Much like the tumultuous political reality in real life, though instead of the Dark One, the problems we face are climate change, or COVID-19, or all the other existential crises, it's a long list. And in terms of the Wheel of Time, the political bent is interesting and leads to a lot of politicking compared to a traditional good versus evil fantasy story. And for this reason and numerous others, The Wheel of Time is an A-list fantasy series and one that I can easily recommend to basically anyone who at least has a passing interest in fantasy literature. It is fantastic. The television adaptation in The Wheel of Time Season 1, however, is a different story. In fact, the Amazon Prime adaptation is of inconsistent quality. Sure, it is a solid show and features some great acting performances, detailed sets, and the cool and lively world and cultures present in the books, but it is also lacking in many areas, most notably in the form of its pacing, editing structure, and some really bad special effects that detract from the show as a cohesive whole. It is kind of a hodgepodge. It's chocolate without peanut butter, or dream theater without Mike Portnoy. The show is just missing some critical pieces, and even though there is undeniably a creative fire and passion brought to the show by showrunner Rafe Judkins and other creatives like actor Rosamund Pike, The Wheel of Time Season 1 is a mixed bag, though one that has slightly more positive merits than negative ones. To explain why this is, let's start by discussing the Wheel of Time Season 1 story. The plot follows the magic-wielding Aes Sedai Moraine and her bodyguard in the Borderland, who are both searching for the Dragon Reborn, i.e. a prophesied reincarnated soul of a legendary man or woman that is chosen to either be a champion of the light and fight the evil Dark One during the last battle, or destroy the world, because prophecies have a lot of leeway like that. At the show's start, Moraine checks her various LinkedIn style Dragon Reborn resumes and narrows her search down to four or five candidates who dwell in the Two Rivers, which is a locale out in the middle of nowhere like the Shire, but more realistic and less wholesome, but does contain the same amount of people getting high. From there, Moraine suspects that the intelligent Egwene, the shepherd Rand, the trickster Matt, the blacksmith Perrin, or the village wisdom Nynaeve, though this suspicion that she might be the Dragon Reborn happens later on compared to the others, are unbeknownst to them the fantasy Jesus that she is looking for, and Moraine must use some detective work to decipher which one of them is the Dragon Reborn. But things don't go according to plan for Moraine. Shortly after arriving, the Two Rivers comes under attack from Trollocs, or monstrous minions of the evil Dark One, and with that, Moraine forms a travel party with the various souls who could potentially be the Dragon Reborn, though as I said before, one of them comes along later, and they flee the Two Rivers and hope to find a refuge in the Aes Sedai stronghold of Tar Balon, and once there, maybe they will all find answers. The plot by itself is a strength. Much like the books, the show is very much character focused. Through playful banter, lively character interactions, and stellar performances, we really get a feel for the main cast. Moraine is wise but cryptic and has her own secrets. Lan is a warrior with a tragic backstory. Egwene is inquisitive and extremely intelligent. Rand is stubborn and often questions authority. Matt is a mischievous troublemaker. Perrin is thoughtful and contemplative. And Nynaeve is tenacious but cares deeply for her people and will protect them no matter the cost. And regardless of which character we are talking about, they all stand out on their own merits and go on their own arcs and adventures, which is impressive seeing as all seven of them are important to the overall narrative and have to do a lot of heavy lifting in order to get viewers that are unfamiliar with the source material up to speed. Furthermore, we also feel a rift between Moraine and the Young Two Rivers cast, which is interesting. See, in many fantasy stories, there is a trope where a wise magical user leads a travel party of inexperienced kids and or country bumpkins on a quest of some sort. And between the two sides, there is usually a shared level of respect between the wise and knowledgeable magic-using characters 
character or characters in the young and unworldly adventurers, a la the Lord of the Rings. But the Wheel of Time is different. The two sides are often at an impasse with one another. While Moraine and Lan are knowledgeable and wise to the actual history and regional politics around them, and the children on the other side have never left the two rivers before, and are thus ignorant to the world, the two sides mistrust each other, which leads to some good tension. The audience often wonders what Moraine's political game is, or if one of the kids is going to go against Moraine's or Land's instructions, even though they should listen to their authority in some instances. Looking at you, Matt. And that's just good television and character development that keeps the viewer engaged in this story, mostly because it's a new way for the viewers to process an old trope, and it is quite interesting like that. The racially inclusive casting is another plus. Unlike many other fantasy shows and movies, The Wheel of Time Season 1 features a multicultural cast that spans many races. From the leads to the small supporting characters, there is representation of all types, and this is a good thing, mostly because actors of color are so often overlooked in the fantasy space, even though they are capable and deserve to be portrayed as important and nuanced protagonists as much as white people do. And awesomely enough, The Wheel of Time Season 1 gets this incredibly right. We see actors of color be given a shot as leads or as powerful, capable, and nuanced people. Hell, there's even queer representation to boot. And while there is some valid criticism online from people of color and how lighter skin complexions in this show are portrayed more heroically compared to darker skin tones, which are portrayed villainously, The Wheel of Time Season 1 is a step in the right direction in terms of on-screen representation and establishes a standard that other fantasy series should follow. The show's gender dynamic is pretty pretty great as well. In fact, the show retains the series' uniquity in that women are the only ones who can safely channel the magical force known as the One Power, all while men who channel the One Power inevitably go insane, and are more or less culled by the all-female magic organization known as the Aes Sedai before the insane men can endanger themselves or those around them. And this is interesting, mostly because it's a power structure that challenges the typical patriarchal power dynamic, because seeing as there's this all-powerful magic order of women, the power balance is flipped compared to our more patriarchal real world. And while men still hold power and sway in the Wheel of Time's world, they can be met with a resistance of powerful women, which is very unique for a fantasy show and gives the Wheel of Time a distinct identity. After all, many fantasy movies and shows are told from male perspectives, to say nothing of a certain show with a cavalier attitude towards sexual assault, but the Wheel of Time season 1 is feminist to its core and has a focus on gender equality that is really unique and interesting in the fantasy space. It is good in this regard. The Wheel of Time Season 1 also contains some good nuts and bolts qualities as well. From an adaptation standpoint, it is really cool to see the characters we love so much be embodied on screen. I loved seeing the detailed sets and costumes, even though these costumes were obviously machine manufactured, but honestly, I don't really care about that. It was awesome to hear Lauren Valve's score that accompanies so many of the epic events and cool characters from the books, and it was interesting to see where the adaptation deviated from the source material, which made the show unpredictable even despite how I've read through the entire series and have read The Eye of the World itself more than a handful of times. And these are all things combined with the good characters, the diverse casting, and the cool portrayal of the series' gender power dynamic that kept me engaged for the first season over its eight episode run. They kept me glued to the TV, so to speak. However, with that being said, The Wheel of Time Season 1 has a shit ton of problems, issues that devalue its overall narrative. The first and most apparent of these flaws is the show's pacing and narrative presentation. In fact, many narrative beats in the show happen too quickly for there to be any form of meaningful narrative impact. For example, let's talk about the second episode's portrayal of the cursed city of Shatter Logoth. In the book, Shatter Logoth is given a lot of buildup in terms of its eerie description and the evil it houses within. Through Jordan's chilling prose, the reader gets a sense that the city is creepy and unnerving, and after a lot of Shatter Logoth's setup, our heroes meet the monstrous foe known as Mordeth, named as such because he likes the idea of more death, ha ha, which eventually culminates into an epic escape sequence where our heroes must flee Shatter Logoth, its murderous evil manifestation in Mashadar, and the Trollocs that are searching for them. It is just an awesome sequence all around, in the book. Unfortunately, the show's version of these events is very lacking. If anything, the show very much rushes through this important part of the Eye of the World story, just describing the abandoned city's evil nature through exposition and its admittedly well-detailed sets before all too quickly hurtling towards an episode 
ending action beat rather than letting the locale establish itself as a creepy setting with a certain build-up or payoff that was present in the book. Because to be blunt, the chill factor is gone, the show doesn't stay in the cursed city long enough for the audience to understand the weight of its presence, Mashadar is just a silly shadow monster thingy rather than a fog of death, and Mordeth isn't even present in the adaptation. And sadly, when it comes to Shatter Logoth, as well as many other aspects from the books that are poorly portrayed in the show, the storytelling nuance got lost in the adaptation. Just like Marin Alvarez's Honey Cakes. And honestly, that's sad, because The Wheel of Time Season 1 is at its best when it takes time to set up its characters and scenes. But unfortunately, there are a fair few instances, like with Shatter Logoth, where the show feels like it's rushing to the next critical point, rather than just telling a whole cohesive story that happens naturally. Its narrative just feels hurried. Furthermore, The Wheel of Time Season 1 has a problem when it comes to adapting certain key events of the story. While many events from the books remain in the adaptation, or at least the ideas of them remain present, these events aren't represented and portrayed with the storytelling skill that they were in the novels. For example, the dream sequences involving a Shamael are mostly just blunt and unintimidating visions of a man with fiery eyes and are corny compared to how creepy and built up they were in the novels. Moraine's Manatherine speech to the young Eamon's fielders lacks the emotional resonance it had in the books, because in the eye of the world, she told that speech in order to quell a bunch of ignorant yokels who brought out their torches and pitchforks and wanted to murder her. Rand's miracle Houdini escape moment in the books was changed from an awesome powerful lightning strike to him ramming a bolted door down, which isn't anywhere near as cool. Perrin's wolf power introduction is kind of awkward and isn't as personal as it was in the books. And last but not least, the Dragon Reborn reveal is weak sauce, which is a problem. After all, the big question that drives the Wheel of Time Season 1's narrative is the question of who is the Dragon Reborn, a question that in the books is answered explosively. See, the conclusion of the Eye of the World reveals the identity of the Dragon Reborn after an explosive and awesome action-packed finale, albeit one that is a little confusing and hard to follow at times. But the show's Dragon Reborn reveal is comparatively dull. There's no real hero moment or big display of power that accompanies this character's revelation. In fact, the reveal is interjected into the story unprompted after some awkward coitus or a climax that was at least good for one character. And honestly, the reveal is just there and presented without much cinematic style or skillful narrative layering, and as a result, the revelation lacks the teeth that it so desperately deserves. It is missing that epic character building sense that was present in the books. The visual effects are shoddy as well. For one thing, there are a lot of poorly cobbled together chase sequences that would more befit a network TV show rather than a series costing tens of millions of dollars, and the Trolloc effects look really bad. While the Trollocs appear solid and have cool designs while standing still, the Trollocs look supremely fake when in motion, which is sadly most of the time, because things that are alive are things that move. And honestly, their movements look entirely unnatural, which causes them to look fake, and it kind of takes you out of the action a bit, which is sad but true. The season eventually culminates into a bad conclusion from there. In fact, episode 8 is easily the worst episode of season 1, representing all of the Wheel of Time season 1's worst qualities. It has a lot of exposition, despite how it's the finale where action should take prominence, because that's what a climax is supposed to do. There's some changes to the source material that I dislike, and wow do the Trolloc effects look really bad. And honestly, the Wheel of Time season 1 ends on a sour note overall. It ends at its worst hour, which is just unfortunate. Still, I'm interested to see where The Wheel of Time Season 2 goes from here. While Season 1 is a 6 out of 10 style mixed bag, a lot of the issues weren't necessarily the fault of the creatives. Honestly, the season probably would have been better if it had more episodes and screen time devoted to world building, something that the showrunner Rafe Judkins actually wanted, which would have allowed some of the events in the show to avoid feeling rushed. It probably would have been better with more time. Another issue that the show ran into that wasn't the fault of the creatives was that the COVID-19 pandemic really screwed over some of season one's filming schedule to the point that the Wheel of Time's cast and crew had to halt filming and take a break. And once filming resumed, things got worse because Matt's actor Barney Harris declined to return to the show despite how there was still filming to do, likely causing a lot of last minute script rewrites. With those caveats in mind, I do still have some optimism in regards to how the show will go from here. 
here. I remain intrigued as to how and if season two improves over the first season, because honestly, there is a strong foundation here. The characters and the actors are really good. The world is interesting. The diversity is wholesome. The feminist themes are unique in the fantasy space, and the source material remains A+. And while season one is flawed, though some of these flaws do spawn from the fact that I can directly compare the show to the book, the creatives behind The Wheel of Time have a lot of good material to work with here. There is a chance that a show can hit its stride and fly high. And with that, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like rating, subscribe, ring the bell, share, and leave a comment telling me what you think of The Wheel of Time Season 1 or The Wheel of Time as a book series as a whole. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. And speaking of Patreon, I just want to thank my patrons, especially my high tier ones in David Samantha Devlin, Mom, and Morgan. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Love y'all.